I've been using the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 13, the early 2018 edition, for the past two weeks as my daily driver. I wanted to see if it could compete with one of my favorite offerings from Xiaomi, the Mi Notebook Pro. That's the 15.6 inch bigger brother of the Air 13. Hey everybody, this is Andrew, and this is my two week review of the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 13 for 2018. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I have a lot of exciting things on the way to the studio. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. And in case you haven't checked out my unboxing and first impressions video, I'll leave the link below for you to check it out. Right now you can get the Mi Notebook Air 13 for $9.59. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, one of my favorite laptops of last year was the Mi Notebook Pro, that 15.6 inch Xiaomi offering that I really did love, giving it my editor's choice. But the Mi Notebook Air 13 shares some of the same DNA. It has the same eighth generation Intel Core i5-8250U processor. It also has eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. And what this really translates to is 40% boost in performance over last year's Kaby Lake processor, seventh gen processor, and that's pretty good. Although they are throttling it down. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. But I was hoping that the performance would also be the same, and that's not quite the deal. Here you see the Mi Notebook Air 13 didn't do quite as well on the Geekbench 4 multi-core score. And that's because of its smaller size and thermal issues. They needed to keep it cool, so they throttled it down. And just like its bigger brother, it also has the NVIDIA GeForce MX150 GPU. It also has two gigabytes of video memory. And here's how it did on the Geekbench 4 OpenCL test. What's interesting is it didn't do quite as well as the Mi Notebook Pro, slightly worse. And it did certainly worse than the HP Spectre X360 that I looked at in late 2017. The MX150 will certainly help with things like video editing and playing games. Like for instance, I was able to play GTA 5, running it at 1920 by 1080 on low settings, a good playable 70 frames per second. When you turn up the settings, you're gonna have that to about 35 frames per second. In a more demanding game such as Witcher 3, when I put it on 720p high setting, you're gonna get about 37 frames per second. 768p medium, you're gonna get 42 frames per second. And when you turn it up to 1080p medium, it goes down to about 30 frames per second. Of course, the MX150 will not be as powerful as something, say, like the GTX 1060 that we recently saw in the Surface Book 2. And of course, in order to keep it cool, you're going to hear the fans kick in. Now, one thing I didn't like about this device is that it kicked in a little bit more than other devices with the same chipset. And one other negative is it will start to throttle down when it hits about 72 degrees Celsius, which is way too soon in my book. I would prefer to see it around 90 degrees Celsius, then I could accept the throttling down, but not at 72 degrees Celsius. Now you can overclock the CPU. Chris over at Tech Tablets goes into more detail. I'll put a link below to his video where he goes into that more detail. And of course you will get better numbers, better benchmarks as a result, but again, one big problem with this device will be its thermal throttling at around 72 degrees Celsius. And just like previous models, you can install your own M2 SATA SSD drive. Removing the back plate was pretty easy, but you can put that secondary SSD drive. Really a great handy feature, and I wish more manufacturers would follow that lead. And as far as the SSD is concerned, it did really well on the reads and writes on the Crystal Disk Mark Test, 3362 on the read, and a very healthy 1286 on the write. Probably my favorite part of this device is its display. It sports a 13.3 inch IPS display. It has a full HD resolution that's 1920 by 1080, which comes out to a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And you're looking at about 166 pixels per inch. It's also a fully laminated display and it's covered in Gorilla Glass 3. The blacks are very deep, the colors are very vibrant, I didn't see any screen bleed, and it has very good viewing angles. And also the bezels are pretty thin, although not the thinnest I've ever seen. And I was hoping this would be the year we'd finally see a touchscreen option on the Mi Notebook line. Unfortunately, that's not the case, but let's keep our fingers crossed, hopefully the next iteration will give us that option. 
and I'm also noticing the screen is very bright, making it good for both indoor and outdoor use, although it is glossy, so keep that in mind. And I actually think this is a better display than the Mi Notebook Pro. Of course, it has more pixels per inch due to the fact that it does have a smaller display. But it does seem just a little bit sharper, just a little bit better than the Mi Notebook Pro's display. Now, I know a lot of you are probably considering the Mi Notebook Pro versus the Xiaomi Air 13 that I have here. And there are a few differences, namely the size and weight. As you can see between these two, there is quite a bit of a difference in terms of weight and as far as the dimensions are concerned. Although the thickness is about the same, it does take up a lot more space. I'm talking about the Mi Notebook Pro. And I'm really glad that Xiaomi decided to go with the dark gray color as they did with the Mi Notebook Pro. I'm a big fan of it and I love the fact there's no glowing logo or any kind of insignia on the outside of the device. Very minimalistic, very classy, and very sleek looking. Now as far as ports are concerned, here's what you get. On the left side of the device, you have an HDMI port to connect to a monitor, a USB 3.0 Type A, and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. And on the right side, you have a USB 3.0 Type-A, that's the second one on this device, and a USB Type-C, that's the port you'll use to charge the device. Unfortunately, it's not Thunderbolt 3, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but you can do data, charge, and display out. And just like the Mi Notebook Pro, the fingerprint sensor is located within the touchpad. It worked really well, registering my finger pretty much every time I've used it so far. Great for logging in with Windows Hello. And I really like the keyboard. Now you're looking at about 1.2 millimeters of key travel. I like the spacing on the keys. I thought it was a very quality feeling keyboard with good tactile feedback. You don't feel like your fingers are going to bottom out when you're typing on it. Really good overall. And it's a backlit keyboard, which I'm always happy to see. Although I would have liked to have seen a multi-level backlight of keyboard. Here you only get one. I'm hoping they will change that in the next iteration. And I really like the Precision Touchpad. I thought it was nicely sized. I think the responsiveness was spot on. Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised, and it was a pleasure to use two-finger scrolling. And once again, the Mi Notebook Air 13 has some excellent speakers. They're AKG branded, and they have Dolby Audio Premium as well. And they sound really good. I thought the volume was very good, mids were very good, and there was bass. Overall, I'd say these are very good speakers. Now, I did my sound test in my unboxing video, so I encourage you to check it out. But just for those that didn't get a chance to look at it, here's the difference between this and its bigger brother, the Mi Notebook Pro. Check it out. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, things didn't turn out so great. Now, it only has a 39 watt hour battery, which is on the small side, considering other 13 inch devices have a bigger battery capacity. Nonetheless, with 40% screen brightness, doing YouTube, Netflix, some light gaming, some Photoshop, and some web browsing, you're going to get around six hours and 40 minutes, and that's it. And to put the battery life into perspective, here's how it did against its competition. Now, note you want to look at the Mi Notebook Pro, which has a 61 watt hour battery. It did significantly better. It also didn't do as well as all the other devices on this list, which is a bit disappointing. But the good news is it charges really fast. It takes about an hour and 35 minutes to fully charge this device, which is excellent for this category of laptop. So this is the 720p webcam on the new Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 13 here in 2018. And it's okay, it's nothing special. I've seen worse, this is certainly not the best. Uh, let me know what you think of the audio in the comment section below. I'd say this is pretty much average, pretty mediocre. 
I would nothing to get excited about, but certainly something you can use when you want to do Skype, when you need to video conference, this certainly will work. But again, nothing outstanding. And as far as the dual band wireless AC, the downloads, uploads, what we'd expect from this class of Wi-Fi card. And the other thing you need to keep in mind when purchasing this device, it comes with Windows Home Chinese. Now you can convert it to English easily. Check out my unboxing and first impressions video. I go through a walkthrough on how to do that. So to bring it all home, can I recommend the 2018 Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 13 with the eighth generation Intel Core i5 processor? And the answer is no, I'm not gonna recommend it. And the reason being is, although it does have some great attributes such as a really nice display, really good looks, really good design. I just think the fans go on way too often. It gets very hot. The thermal throttling occurs at 72 degrees Celsius. And to me, these are all deal breakers. But I think the biggest deal breaker for me is the fact that you can get the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Pro, which doesn't have any of those issues for similar amount of price. And to me, it's a no brainer. Go for the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Pro if you're choosing between these two. Of course, it is a larger, heavier device, but I'm willing to sacrifice certain things to get the better performance. And that's why I'm gonna give this a 68%. If you're in the market for a Xiaomi laptop, go with the Mi Notebook Pro instead. So what do you think about the Xiaomi Air 13? Well, <laughs> God, I really wanted to love this one. I had so many high hopes for this. As you know, I love that Mi Notebook Pro, the 15.6 inch version, but I was really disappointed in the throttling down of the performance of the smaller version, the Mi Notebook Air 13 that I have here. Everything I liked about it in the initial review, the fact that it has a really nice display. In fact, I think the display is a tad nicer than the 15.6 inch display on the Mi Notebook Pro. But this display is not the problem here. And the, the speakers are excellent as we've come to expect from the Mi Notebook line. It's got the AKG branded Dolby uh, digital sound on this and it's really very good but that's not where the problem lies. That relies on the thermal throttling at a mere 72 degrees Celsius. And to me, that is a deal breaker. That's something you don't get with its bigger brother, the Mi Notebook Pro. And that's why I'm gonna steer you towards that bigger version, even though it is heavier and it is bigger than this. The reason I like the Mi Notebook Pro is because you don't get that compromised performance. Now, the other problem with this is, is it has only a 39 watt hour battery. And I think the lack of the bigger battery that you'd get, say in the Mi Notebook Pro, which has room for a bigger battery. In fact, it has a 61 watt hour battery. This only gets uh, about six and a half hours at most. And to me, that's a little bit disappointing. Now, I had high hopes with this because it is a 13 inch form factor that I really do love. And I love the fact that it has that dedicated GPU, just like the Mi Notebook Pro. It's the MX150 with us two gigabytes of graphics memory. But again, the thermal throttling really hurts this. And the other problem I had with this device is the fact that the fans kicked on quite often, a lot more than other devices running the same chipset. In fact, if you look at the Mi Notebook Pro, it didn't run nearly as often, uh, as far as the fans are concerned, as this Xiaomi Air 13. But I'm curious to know what you think about this. I really am a little bit disappointed on this. I'm not going to recommend it. As much as I love the form factor, as much as I love the display and the speakers, I think you're better off, money better spent on its bigger brother, the Mi Notebook Pro. But again, let me know in that comment section below what you think. And the other issue is it's a price. Right now, importing it from China means you're going to pay a premium. I've seen it as high as $1,100 and for that, amount of money, I can't recommend this, at least not at that price point. Now, if, of course, if you get it on flash sale, if it lowers the price, which I'm anticipating it will at some point, then maybe we can talk. But right now, the compromised performance, the thermals on this aren't just what I need it to be. I would rather go with the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Pro if you're looking for the Mi Notebook line. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.